This is EDUC 4703, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning, Session 2, Video Clip 1. The title of this video clip is A Brief History of PBL. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, in what types of programs did PBL first appear? Number two, what was the pattern of secondary PBL program development? And number three, what are the common elements in all PBL programs? PBL is based on ideas that have been around for a long time. We'll be exploring these ideas uh, a little later in this course. However, right now, we'll be looking at the diffusion of uh, specific PBL processes as originated in the late 1960s. Problem-based learning, or PBL, as instituted at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada in the 1960s, the late 1960s, 1968, um, is described as an educational approach that is based on andragogy, that is adult education, philosophy, psychology, educational research, teaching and learning, curriculum design, and various other important areas. According to Barrows, 1980, PBL can be explained as the learning that results from the process of working toward the understanding or resolution of a problem. This approach is usually case-based, completed with a small group, no more than eight individuals. It uses self-directed learning, and it's within which the group is given a problem to solve. The group has a tutorial leader or facilitator who shares information, rather than the leader who is serving the role of an expert that is imparting knowledge. In sum, PBL learning is a process of building on prior knowledge, problem solving, using critical thinking approaches, and reflecting. It's taken from Maudsley, 1989. This self-directed collective approach is a very different way to teaching and learning than lecture-based designs. Before the introduction of PBL, standard practice in medical schools has been to create lecture-based curricula in which to impart knowledge to up-and-coming physicians. This began to change in the late 1960s with the introduction of McMaster University's new approach to medical education. PBL was first instigated or in implemented within the medical program only at McMaster University, and subsequently, as you'll see um, in a couple more slides, um, other programs um, were, became uh, late ad adoptees of uh, PBL as well. This moment in history changed the way med many medical schools all over the world design and implement their curricula. Howard Barrows is usually credited for being the first person in Canada to apply problem-based learning to medical education. Barrows' work in, um, in PBL during the mid-1960s developed from the concepts around adult learning. PBL was thought to provide a method for students to integrate knowledge across subject boundaries and to develop problem-solving skills. Barrows grouped the objectives of PBL into four areas, structuring of knowledge in clinical contexts, clinical reasoning, self-directed learning skills, and intrinsic motivation. McMaster University was the first Canadian medical school to adopt this model. Soon after, three other medical schools, in 1972, the University of Limburg at Maastricht in the Netherlands, the University of Newcastle in Australia in 1976, and the University of New Mexico in the United States in 1979, they adopted uh, the McMaster model of problem-based learning and developed their own spheres of influence in addition to the Mecca at McMaster. From these four institutions sprang one of the more, most important um, educational movements of this century that's taken from mededonline.org. Uh, Parallel to the development of PBL, and for a long time almost independently, a tradition of project pedagogy or teaching and engineering education emerged in Denmark. During the 1970s, two new universities were founded, Roskilde University Center in 1972 and Alborg uh, University in 1974. The founding of these new universities occurred due, due to a very strong student movement and, in the case of Alborg University, an industry that wanted new competence profiles for engineers. 
Learning by doing and experiential learning were two of the principles that dominated the development of this particular system. At the universities of Roskilde and Alborg, the principles of pro project-based learning were implemented and fully institutionalized. Both schools proved to be viable models and each has known its own history of development and adaptation of the project model. Project-organized learning has not lived up, however, to the expectation of bringing about changes in society. It has, however, turned out to be an excellent method for developing new types of competencies. That's taken from de Graaf and Kalmos, 2007. All models epitomize the fact that problem-based learning and project-based learning may vary to a certain degree, uh, inviting people to develop mixed models such as they are practiced around the world. The common element in prob problem and project-based learning is that in both cases, learning is organized around problems. A problem as incentive for learning processes is a central principle to enhance students' motivation. Therefore, it's important which problems the students are attracted to on the basis of their own experience and interests. It could be in any type of problem, for instance, a concrete and realistic problem or a theoretical problem. And again, that's taken from de Graaf and Kolmos, 2007. Additional fields were added to the PBL fold. Other health-related programs began to use PBL from the 1980s onwards. Examples of these are the Veterinarian Medicine uh, Program at Mississippi State University, the Pharmacy uh, Program at Samford University, Nursing Program at the University of North, Car North Carolina, and a Nursing Program at Newcastle University. Um, professional pre pre preparatory programs were also using PBL uh, by the 1980s. And these include the engineering program at McMaster University, engineering at Coventry University, and again at Imperial College, business programs at Maastricht University, uh, education programs at Stanford University. Other disciplines in which PBL is used around the world include architecture, economics, educational administration, law, forestry, optometry, police science, art, and social work. PBL in education for the professions has been adopted at universities in Denmark, Finland, France, South Africa, and Sweden. That's taken from Savin Baden, 2007. Why the PBL explosion? Well, in many ways, PBL was the, the right response for the time in which it gained a foothold in medical schools. When, especially when one considers the questions which were being raised at the time about problems with traditional medical curricula. Many of these problems seemed resolvable with a shift to a PBL format. For example, faculty who want students to learn, to remember, to apply, to continue to learn, once out from under their tutelage have, under the traditional format, often been disappointed. Too many students memorize, forget, fail to apply or integrate knowledge, and resist further learning. Problem-based learning curricula seem to foster the more positive attributes of learning in students. Positive attitudes towards learning have been noted as characteristic of students at all schools which have implemented PBL. This does not negate the possibility, of course, that other strategies might also develop similar positive learning attributes. Another contributing uh, factor to the success of PBL as an innovation is that in the first few schools where it was attempted, it was perceived as being very successful by faculty and students. The success in settings sufficiently uh, different from each other gave some confidence to other schools that PBL could be applied universally, or at least in their particular school. In fact, there was considerable communication between the early developers of PBL and late adopters. Most schools learned about the specifics of implementation of PBL at the feet of established programs, either by visits to the established programs or by consultations of faculty from established PBL programs to no progr new programs or both. This mentoring, I believe, has led to the successful implementation of PBL in many places. Then once PBL has been attempted successfully by several medical schools, it became a known innovation and was less risky than some other less proven methods might have been. And again, this is taken from mededonline.org. From a theoretical perspective, um, a great discussion of history and a wide variety of models that have been used for PBL 
um, are described. C. Savinbaden, 2007, Challenging Models and Perspectives of Problem-Based Learning. It's found in DeGraff and Colmos, Editors, Management of Change, Implementation of Problem-Based and Project-Based Learning in Edu Engineering, published in Rotterdam by Sense Publishing. And to complete this video clip, the synthesis questions are as follows. Number one, why does there seem to be a good match between BP PBL and practical professions? Number two, why are the strategies employed in PBL so different than in traditional teaching and learning? And number three, how were the roles of the learner and instructor changed in PBL? Why might this be important?